Brandon Dunahue was used to living alone, and by the time he turned 33 years old, he was an invertebrate bachelor. Sure, he has casual relationships with various women once in a while, but they never turned into anything serious. At the same time, Brandon was a wealthy, self-made man. It's not like he had a seven-figure bank account, but Brandon did have a big house and a Dodge SUV. Brandon's main passion wasn't women or wealth, but travel and tourism. He was very fond of canoeing down a river, hiking in the mountains, or skiing during winter. Such adventures usually gave the man unforgettable emotions and a sense of freedom, which he didn't have in New York. That is why Brandon bought himself an SUV, which was large enough for him to take various equipment on his trips. Since the man didn't have a family, he went on long journeys without feeling guilty or letting anyone down. He tried to find a new place to visit on each of his trips. It could be the mountains of Montana, or the dense forests of Maine, or the snow-capped peaks of Alaska. The positive emotions that Brandon got from trips couldn't be described in words. The man loved each of his adventures, which eventually became the meaning of his life. But it was one specific trip that Brandon remembered especially well. That summer, he explored the mountains of Montana as part of a tour group and met a woman named April. The young beauty turned out to be a really good climber and got to the mountain peak before anyone else in the group. Brandon immediately noticed the woman, who stood out from all the other tourists. It just so happened that when they were setting up camp, the tents of the two young people were placed nearby, which gave them a reason to start talking. Feeling a growing attraction to April, Brandon did his best to charm her. He had an excellent sense of humor, which usually made women fall for him. Thus, their conversation ended with a night spent in April's tent. But it could hardly be called a fling or momentary weakness. April and Brandon were good together, and they both knew it. But when the trip came to an end, all the tourists set off in a different direction, as did the couple. The fact was that Brandon and April lived in different cities, several hundreds of miles apart from each other. The young people promised to call each other, and certainly see each other again. And they did keep their promise at first. There were calls and conversations about everything in the world. A month later, Brandon started distancing himself from April, and his feelings for her gradually faded away. The long-distance relationship just couldn't compete with the charm of the women that were physically around. Brandon didn't really feel all that sad about the end of their relationship. He was a free spirit and enjoyed traveling a lot. He also loved his job that provided him with the decent income. Brandon was the head of the sales department and was known as a talented leader and a responsible employee. The determined young man came to the office before anyone else and stayed there late into the night. He usually stopped by the supermarket after work to get himself something for dinner, and that day was no exception. Leaving his Dodge in the supermarket parking lot, Brandon headed for the store. At that very moment, he saw a young woman with a boy who appeared to be five or six years old. They were sitting on a bench, shivering in the cold, piercing wind. The woman's face seemed vaguely familiar to Brandon. As he approached her, he felt a sense of pity for the woman and the child. It was obvious that the woman had some problems, which she simply couldn't solve on her own. Hello, ma'am. Are you all right? Is there anything I can help you with? Brandon asked cautiously. The woman sighed sadly in response and shook her head somewhat indifferently. At that moment, the boy sitting next to her said, We just moved here, sir. We have nowhere to live and nothing to eat. We came here so I could get my surgery. It was only now that Brandon saw his miniature cane standing next to the bench. Apparently, the boy had problems with his legs, which made him unable to walk properly. The kiddo's words shocked Brandon so much that he stopped and wrinkled his forehead thoughtfully. Then, as if having made some important decision, he suggested, You know what? Let me take you to my place. I have a big house and there's enough space for everyone in it. Don't be afraid. I won't harm you. 
there's my car right there. You see it? The woman smiled sweetly. It was obvious that she was very interested in the offer made by the good-looking man dressed in an expensive suit. Okay, go wait in the car and I'll get some groceries real quick, Brandon said and gave the young woman the keys to his Dodge. The stranger felt a little uncomfortable for a moment, but she helped her son up and led him to the car parked nearby. At the store, Brandon bought twice as much food as he usually did. On top of that, he took an additional carton of milk and some sweets for the boy. Returning to his car, Brandon was pleased to see that the young mother and her son were already waiting for him in the spacious cabin of his Dodge. The kiddo liked the car so much that he was ready to live in it. On their way to Brandon's house, the young people started talking and Brandon found out that the woman's name was Diana and her son was Jacob. It was obvious that they were very poor. As it turned out, the boy had a congenital disease of the leg joints which prevented him from being able to walk properly. In order to treat his condition, Brandon needed surgery that could only be done in New York. At some point, Brandon found himself thinking once again that Diana's face seemed familiar. But on the other hand, he knew perfectly well that he had never seen her before in his life. He never knew a woman with that name. Arriving at the house, Brandon got out of the car and opened the front door. Then, smiling sweetly, he invited the guests to come inside. For reasons unknown to himself, Brandon felt happy that he would no longer have to live alone in his big house. The man showed Diana and Jacob the bathroom and the kitchen, and then led the guests to their own room. Brandon was very surprised that Diana had nothing with her, apart from a small travel bag. Fortunately, the man had some women's clothes, which he bought for the rare occasions of when some women stayed at his house. Your house is so big and beautiful. It's nothing like the shack Jacob and I used to live in, Diana said with delight. I'm good at my job, so I can afford it, Brandon retorted jokingly. Being a gracious host, Brandon quickly whipped up dinner that consisted of scrambled eggs, bacon, and toast. There was also an apple pie and cranberry juice for dessert, which Brandon had the foresight to buy at the store. Since Diana and Jacob had to go to the hospital the next day, they all decided to go to bed early. But unlike his guests, Brandon couldn't fall asleep for a long time. Tossing and turning in bed, the man tried to remember where he could have seen Diana before. But no matter how hard Brandon tried to strain his memory, he couldn't find the answer to the nagging question. The next morning, he woke up before everyone else and made fresh coffee, the aroma of which immediately woke Diana and Jacob. In order to make it easier for the guests to get to the clinic, Brandon volunteered to drive them there. When breakfast was over, they all got ready and set out on their way. But when Diana was getting into the car, her purse opened and a small photo fell out onto the pavement. Wanting to help the woman, Brandon quickly picked up the picture and having glanced at it, froze in surprise. Is something wrong? Diana asked with concern in her voice. Leaving the woman's question unanswered, Brandon stood and stared at the photo without looking up. The fact was that the man had already seen this photo before and it was actually Brandon who took the shot on a hiking trip in the mountains of Montana. He was the only one missing from the group of the tourists pictured in this shot. How did you get this picture? Only the members of this group had it, but you definitely weren't there. Brandon asked when he came to his senses. It's not mine. My sister April brought it from her trip to the mountains of Montana. Unfortunately, she died in childbirth. Jacob is actually her son, and I know nothing about her husband. Diana replied, lowering her voice. Apparently, the woman really didn't want Jacob to hear their conversation. At that moment, Brandon felt slightly dizzy and trying to keep his balance, leaned against the door of his car. Looking at Diana, the man decided to postpone the trip to the hospital and tell her everything he knew. The fact was that Brandon had already done the math in his head and had figured out that there was a very big chance that he was the father of April's child. But the man really didn't want to tell Diana about it. Because in the eyes of the young woman, he was the bastard who'd abandoned her sister in a difficult situation. 
Choosing his words carefully, men stammering at every syllable, Brandon told Diana the whole truth from start to finish. The woman listened quietly, never once interrupting his story, but she couldn't hold back her tears. Brandon kept talking and talking, trying to justify himself in Diana's eyes. Of course, if he were a wizard and could rewind time, he would have certainly gone back to the past and would have never parted with April. Unfortunately, all he could do was feel deep regret from his past actions and hope that Diana and Jacob could forgive him. Fortunately, Diana chose not to hold a grudge against him. She understood that the mistakes of the past could no longer be corrected and that Jacob's health had to be their top priority now. Having bared his soul, Jacob started his car and took Diana and Jacob to the hospital. But when the boy and his adoptive mother got out of their appointment with the doctor, who specialized in the musculoskeletal system, they had somewhat unfortunate news to share. The fact was that the surgery costs a lot of money. Diana left the doctor's office with tears in her eyes, and only Jacob looked calm, since he was too young to understand what it all meant. It's very expensive, Brandon. I'll never be able to raise so much money. The woman whispered with a sob. Deep down, Brandon had already made up his mind and wasn't going to go back on his decision. Upon learning the amount required for Jacob's surgery, he sold his Dodge to a work colleague who had been expressing interest in it for a long time. Then, Brandon took out a loan, putting up his property on collateral. He added this money to the proceeds he got from selling the car. Fortunately, this amount was more than enough for the doctors to start treating Jacob. While the boy was in surgery, Diana stayed in his room, refusing to leave her post even for a minute. Meanwhile, Brandon didn't sit around and was making arrangements for his son's physical therapy for after the surgery. Upon learning that the surgery went well, Brandon was relieved and extremely happy. Now, the man knew that he would never leave his son again and make sure that both Jacob and Diana are finally truly happy. Brandon was 100% sure that Jacob was his biological son. However, he still needed to get a paternity test in order to officially prove kinship. All this time, Jacob and Diana lived in Brandon's house and they all turned into one real family. A year later, Brandon and Diana got married, which was a logical continuation of their romantic relationship. Playing with Jacob on the playground behind the house, the young parents were seriously considering having another child, although they haven't made that decision yet. Meanwhile, Brandon and Diana continued to enjoy family life, never failing to remember April, who was watching them from above and smiling. <laughs>